did you know that you can come and study here in the u.s i'm actually not in the u.s i'm in mexico right now <laughs> in cancun but you can come and study in the u.s as an international student for free that is through scholarship and you can also apply to many universities for free you can come with your family you can work and all that today i'm going to share with you how to study here in the u.s as an international student stress free i wish i knew i wish somebody shared with me this uh, information i wish such information would be shared out there for people to um, learn to understand how the system works and to take advantage of the opportunities of such wonderful um, engagement wonderful opportunities wonderful um, information that i'm going to share with you right now uh, so today we are going to talk about how to be how to study in the u.s as an international student stress free the things i wish somebody shared with me okay if you're meeting me for the very first time my name is sheila ateno bandigraf i'm an international student here in, um, again i'm not in the u.s right now um, something to share if you have a u.s visa you can cross over to it's easy for you to come to mexico to have some fun because you don't need a visa anyway that's by the way i'm an international student in the u.s in the u.s uh doing my second master's in international development uh, i'm also on a full scholarship and some of these things i'm going to share with you are the things i didn't know that i could have done long time ago so i don't want you to have that long time ago history i want you to experience it right now and i'm so glad that you've taken time to be with me today please hit the subscribe button like share i share information about study abroad opportunities and all that let's join the family share the love like one reason wh how you can live in the u.s um stress-free is to take care of your tuition how do you take care of your tuition one scholarship try as much as possible to apply for scholarship because studies in the u.s are not cheap it's very very expensive to study in the u.s it's extremely expensive and a lot of students uh, especially uh, international and local all their life uh, they live they have to pay back for their tuition fee so if you can apply for scholarship um, it will be really really good for you to apply for scholarship I did apply to four, un four universities and I'm so grateful that the four universities gave me scholarship so it's not easy it's not cheap for us international students you can just leave your country and come and work here and come and study here and hoping that you can pay for your tuition because if you if you do it that way you'll be so stressed up i know one of my not my one per unit per course i think in my university is over almost six thousand dollars it's very expensive and you have to uh, be as an international student you have to do at least three or two courses i think so so every three months you have to have ten thousand dollars you can't manage that so make sure that you have scholarship how do you go about getting scholarship when you're applying do a very strong personal statement and i've said guys reach out to me i can help you do a very strong personal statement do not apply to just one university apply to at least three four universities and give reasons why you'd you'd be a good candidate to get the scholarship if you see a chance of getting scholarship please go ahead and apply to that scholarship because they're looking for students like you you're bringing in diversity you're bringing in a lot of opportunities a lot of learning experience that they cannot get you know so you're bringing in value to the university so just apply to those um, scholarship uh, ask the school if they have i know of a friend who a friend of mine who went to another university she got a very little scholarship and decided to explore it again if you get scholarship you, when you come to the university you've traveled to the university here in the u.s you can request for more scholarship okay so it doesn't mean that you know where, where we come from especially i come from africa when you're given something you don't want to ask again you feel like it's rude to ask here people ask so if you get one scholarship just ask another one ask for another one because they have those scholarships go to your department request them because you're not only coming in as you know you are bringing value to the university you're bringing uniqueness you're bringing um uh you're bringing very learning um awesome learning points that they cannot get from just reading the internet you're bringing information that they don't have and take advantage of that okay 
uh, I've talked about scholarship. The second one that you need to take advantage of is take advantage of the loans. Um, here in the US, if you get a scholarship and you don't know how to go about it, there are so many uh, organizations that are giving loans. The organizations that are willing to give you loans. And I know my friend who's gotten a loan that he's, go he's gonna pay uh, within 12 years and every month is just going to pay is paying $250 so don't miss out on opportunities to study don't miss, miss out on opportunities to study here in the US because you don't have money to fund it if you get a scholarship uh, however little it is you've looked for other scholarship you can't and then you your family are not in a position to support you or maybe they can support you to a certain limit or maybe you know something else happens don't i know uh, this studies uh, study abroad is very important for us especially because of so many reasons <laughs> that i don't want to share here uh, probably some people don't think that our education is that good our education is awesome but when you have a backup from uh, study abroad from universities here in the u.s who are really 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 good universities don't let that chance go uh, go you know disappear in front of your eyes Take advantage of student loans and they also they give loans to international students okay so don't think that if you're an international student you cannot get a loan you can get a loan it's in the description link the loans and how to go about it you only pay 250 dollars a month and because you can work 20 hours i'm going to talk about it you might be in a position to um, find your education stress-free so the third one is take advantage of free application uh, especially in the US uh, in the month of November there's uh, most universities uh, allow students especially international students to apply for free so if you know you if you've tried applying uh, making your application you know that application fee are crazily high I remember when I was doing my application I paid so much so much one school probably wants you to pay like fifty dollars another one a hundred another one seventy dollars and this limits a lot of really really good students so in order to again we are talking about stress free take advantage of these universities that are giving you free application one thing uh, tip november most universities in the u.s uh, allow the, allow international students and local students to apply for free so take advantage of that because uh, I mean if somebody can take care of that course for you all you need to do is just to apply to as many and uh, uh, apply to as many universities as you can because it gives you a higher chance of getting accepted and also gives you a higher chance of getting scholarship so take advantage of those are free application um, universities that are providing free application I have shared more than 20 universities here in the US that are still giving free application for international students so check the videos that i've shared um, there in the video section i'm also tagging it in this video check them out they give you free applications so you don't need to pay a penny for you to apply when you've taken care of that course that stress is gone is gone so you not use any money to apply to this unit and you don't have to show um, bank statement you don't have to show proof before you get admitted so if somebody can take care of your application fee please take advantage of it so guys, take advantage of free application. I wish somebody told me that there was free application, especially in the month of November. In the month of November, most universities, but I, I, at the same time, even right now, there are so many universities here in the US that are still giving free application to students. Take advantage of that. Don't use the little money you have for, uh, for application while the universities are providing free application. Almost all universities in the US here are really, really good universities. So don't worry, even if you've never heard of that, the name of that particular university, they are equally, they are really good, they are standardized. They, you know, there's so many, uh, there's so much value as an international student having to get also a degree outside your, uh, your, your country because it gives you an upper chance. It gives you diversity. You learn from other cultures, you learn from other people. So take advantage of that. So another way to uh, study here in the US stress-free is for you to come with your family. If you are in a position to come with your family, I know many people as, um, I'm a mother, and uh, when I was getting these opportunities, I was wondering, can I, is it possible for me to leave my daughter behind? You know, it's very, very stressful for you to leave your family behind. 
so what i realized is that you can come and study in the u.s with your family it is allowed so you don't have to leave your husband you don't have to leave your your wife you don't have to leave your children back to come and study because they understand that they understand and respect uh, the unit of family so they don't want to separate family so i remember when i was applying i didn't know there was that option until i read and at least uh, until somebody a very good friend of mine shared with me that i can come to the u.s with my with my daughter so how you go about it when you get admitted into the university you request them to give you um uh, so there's an I-20, so they also give you, an, you tell them that you have family and you need an I-24 for your family as well. So what you do, uh, uh, my daughter is on uh, F F2, I'm on F1. So the beauty of that is that when you come to the US, they take care of your, like my daughter, they take care of full school fees. I don't get to pay any school fees, which I'm very grateful. Uh, as an international student, I could not have afforded to pay her school fees. So as an F2 uh, student, she gets to, um, so she gets an F2 visa. I got an F1 visa, so I'm the main, main person, she's my dependent. Uh, so you can do that. Um, so they take care of your school fees, uh, they take care of the, the F2, uh, especially children, the school fees is taken care of. Uh, if she, she lives far away from school, school bus is taken care of. She used to get uh, lunch from her school, free of charge and you know you don't have to wear the students don't wear a uniform which she likes she wears anything she wants to wear to go to school and they're very supportive i remember when you came in we didn't know where to get groceries we, we didn't know where to get food we didn't know where to get you know so many things the school sent me two baskets of food you know different foods and just for us to you know ste step in and just try to survive <laughs> so there is just that supportive community and the school has been so far reaching out and asking uh, how best to support so if you can come with your family the better i know many people don't know about it but students here in the u.s you're allowed to come with your family and they, if they're children they're allowed to study and you're not required to pay anything in fact if my daughter misses to uh, a day in school or maybe by 9 40 if she's not seen in school i get a call from school I get a call from school and I get, you know, they ask me what's happening, you know, at, uh, attendance. Uh, she, so I get a call or a voicemail that she's been marked absent. Please tell us where the child is and all that. So they take care of your child's education, your child's um, transportation, no uniform and all that. I don't know where I come from. Hey. School fees is enormous, and then the uniform, the cost of uniform, the cost of uh, um, the buses to school and all that. So I'm just grateful that such opportunities exist and gives international students at least time to study and just to know that they can study comfortably with their family, uh, with their family, with them. So take advantage of that, and that's how another way to uh, study here stress free. You can have all the money, but if your family is not with you, then it makes it so difficult to even um, study, to ma make it so difficult to even interact, make it so difficult to even engage. So yeah, that's what I wanted to share about come with your family, don't leave your family be behind. And if you can do that, you just need to prove that you're in a position to uh, take care of them while here in the US, you're in a position to spend some time spend time with them because here you'll not be able to afford a nanny and all that so i am grateful that i got to know about this opportunity and i wish somebody told me earlier because i kept on postponing my studies kept on saying who will you know how will i leave my daughter behind how will i leave my family behind but i got to know that you can come with your family so another thing you share for you to be at least financially stress-free is take advantage of the 20 hours a week um, to work in campus as an international student uh, you're allowed to work for 20 hours a week and 20 hours a week um, during school day and 40 hours a week when you are on holiday like right now I'm on holiday so I'm allowed to work uh, 40 hours a week and it depends with the state there are some states that pay you less depending on the state rate but in our state uh, that is Colorado per hour you paid around 15 they are about 15 uh, dollars an hour or something like that so depending on your university depending on your state depending on 
the research because I work as a research assistant so depending on the department whether you are uh, administrative or whether you are in um, you work in the food court and all that depending on where you are you are allowed to work 15 hours a week it's not like Canada that can work more than 40 hours a week in the US you are supposed to stick to the rules and that is 20 hours a week and 20 hours a week probably you are paid maybe in your state your state you just paid 10 hours ten dollars an hour that's like um, two hundred dollars a week so that will take care of your cost of food because a lot of people always think oh how how will i take care of my education and at the same time how will i take care of my food how will i take care of my uh, family and all that so you're allowed to work 20 hours a week uh, during school days and 40 hours a week uh, when you're not in school this is exciting because I didn't know about it. I didn't know that people can work when they're studying. I didn't know that you can take care of your course. I didn't know you can take care of your meals and all that through working. And so this is something that I really, really love about the system. And um, you can reach out to how you get these opportunities. You can reach out to your professors and ask them for uh, such opportunities. You can go to Korea. Like for us, we have career office and they keep on sending you opportunities. So you can also take advantage of that. Uh, another way is that you can just um, look at the career portal and they always post a lot of job opportunities. So you can take advantage of that as well. So that's another way of... So guys, there's so much opportunities here. I wish somebody told me and that's why I'm sharing this with you so take advantage of the 20 hours 40 hours a week and work because it saves so much it saves so so much so another thing you can take advantage of uh, that will also help you manage stress here in the US because you're so far away from your family you're far away from the people you love you're far away it's a new community for you um, another thing you can do is take advantage of volunteer, volunteer opportunities uh, there are within your universities, within your community, within the people you are with because through these volunteer opportunities you get to network, you get to get to know more information about people you can possibly work with once you graduate or you can just support the community. I volunteer for a, a refugee uh, organization. Uh, sometimes I always um, do translation for them, especially from because I know how to speak Swahili. For those who want to, uh, probably the refugees who are speaking Swahili and they don't understand English, I volunteer. There's just just some happiness and some, you know, uh, some things that happen with me when I volunteer and it makes my stress just, you know, I feel better. So take advantage of volunteer opportunities and it is through those volunteers they gave me an opportunity to work with them. Unfortunately, I could not because of some challenges. Um, I could not work, but it was very fast for me to get already um, an option to work with them and just to engage with them, you know. So take advantage of that. Take advantage of those volunteer opportunities. And also uh, what I wanted to emphasize is through those volunteer opportunities they also uh, know how to get resources to help you so you can ask them if there are any resources especially these uh, the organization i was working for they could they were in a position to also um not working but volunteer they can tell you some of the resources you can explore they can tell you some of the things you can explore some of the uh, opportunities and all that so take advantage and also volunteer in different organizations you'll also create friends through these volunteer organizations, volunteer opportunities, or maybe even through churches, you know, you don't have to just volunteer in organization. There are also very amazing churches, amazing not churches but just religious setup, uh, really um, community organizations, and all that that can provide you a, a very good solace. It cannot replace home, but it gives you a community for you to engage, a community for you to share, a community for you to learn, and a possibility for you to get a job once you finish your education so that's another thing uh, that has helped me uh, stay sane <laughs> not that I'm going sane but I tend to miss home so much but there's just that joy of just you know going out and supporting and helping and you know so another way of living here in the US stress free as an international student is get a community of uh, have a community okay so a community that you can live with a community that you can uh, not live with but you can engage and support one another and just work 
uh, closely with each other. And this community, I remember when I came to the US, I didn't even have a family. I didn't have, it was really, really stressful. So I really appreciate this family that came, uh, gave us uh, housing for some time. And also Pastor Mwangi and the family who just, uh, you know, gave me housing for, I think, a month. And I would come from school and, you know, they provided almost everything for me. And the other family provided for my daughter as we are trying to, like, you know, and then, I was trying to sort out the housing and all that. So take advantage of the community, uh, especially um, the communities who are welcoming you in this new country. Take advantage of the friendship. I have built a wonderful friendship in this country. I built a wonderful uh, community of people who care, who really love one another, who who are just there. They don't know, they don't care where you come from, but they really want to help you. Um, Dan and Ned and all that, you know, they're just awesome people who just want to support you and they don't care where your background is. So have that community. You cannot leave this country alone. Okay. I know also, of an, also try to engage in online community. I am part of Quiru. Quiru. <laughs> <laughs> so Quito is one of those Facebook um, for everyone who's here, who's in the US and maybe in these uh, um, countries and they miss so much home. I go, I go to Quito to learn, to understand, to, and they're very supportive of uh, one another. So um, I really appreciate Quito if I haven't said thank you before. <laughs> so look at community online support, look at um, physical support, look at you know have a community of friends have a community of people who can just uh support you who can be there for you who can and i've seen how these communities really help one another in need they really come through for people who are you know struggling and having issues at the same time they also come through when you are having your you know your better share so it's a community of for, for better for us so have that community i'm also part of so many like um, uh, international students international community in you know so just have different communities also if you are a religious identify churches where you can be part of that community if you are you know just identify the communities that work with you don't live in this country alone because it's so stressful it can be very stressful just doing it alone so that's what i can tell you uh have a community engage don't just be there and not engaging engage ask questions be involved and volunteer and that's how people get to you know know one another support one another so i'll encourage you to be part of a community i'll encourage you to be as much as you can uh be part of a great family so another thing also i wanted to share is gre gmat TOEFL is not a must for all the universities so take advantage of that because I know having to do those GRE, GMAT, uh, TOEFL and all that is very very expensive okay so not all universities require I don't remember I didn't do GMAT I didn't do GRE first of all I don't believe in that I don't believe in GRE and GMAT I have to make this very particular because um, where we come from first of all many of the many of the people who come as an international student english is not our first language yeah which is awesome because we bring in the diversity but at the same time i've checked on those gmat and and that's why majority of universities right now don't require you to do G, gmat and gre because at the end of the day whatever they are testing is not intelligence and i, I wish to be um, somebody to come out and say oh yeah but you passing in gre and gmat you're a good student i don't think that's the case for me, I think it's another way of just minting money from us. <laughs> like we even have money. <laughs> but GRE and GMAT, it's two, over $200. That's the reason I don't believe in it. It's over $200. A family who can... No, for you to get $200, it's a big sacrifice. Now, the, uh, the language of testing is not language friendly. I, I wish they could, you know, have you do it in your... In your if you speak Spanish, they translate it to Spanish or they translate it to English, uh, uh, French, or they translate it to Swahili so that you can digest it from your home language other than standardized English because then you're already compromised on the language, you're already compromised on um, 
whatever they're testing against what you learned you're already compromised in so many ways and it, it doesn't measure intelligence it measures how fast you can translate english to uh, you can translate english to your swahili or whatever you know so i would just encourage you to look for universities that do not do not require you okay i know there are some programs that you need to do gre and gmat i know that, that i respect that but if you can get an option please go for it and if and that saves you a lot of money okay so that's what i want to share if you can have an opportunity to study uh without paying gre without paying gmat without paying for TOEFL, without you know i believe in inclusivity and those exams just give us put us away from uh having to be part of a family uh, having to be part of this study process so don't be secluded because of these uh, exams look for universities who will support you who will understand that you you know you might not have the money you might not have the cultural understanding you might not in fact even having to do those tests four hours without rest 10 minutes rest in between it's not even fair you know so take advantage of that <laughs> so another thing i want to encourage you is keep keep a close contact as much as you can with home i remember when i came in i felt so lonely i felt like you know i was alone in this country and uh i didn't have people with me so um as an international student it can be so lonely and you can you know <laughs> you're not used to being lonely so keep a close contact with your friends don't lose your friends back at home don't lose uh, contact with your family now that you're in another country i know the vibe those who are you know <laughs> you want to show people that you've made it in life no i think that's not the best way to go about it so keep a close contact with home keep a close contact with the people you you um your family i remember my mom my, my siblings my dad they used to encourage me a lot and especially coming to this country with a daughter um it was really really difficult it's extremely difficult and it was extremely stressful so keep a close contact with home uh keep a close contact with the people you uh your friends the community you left back at home at times when you just talk to them and you speak your language you feel like oh, it's gone <laughs> so try that if you haven't <laughs> and it's gonna be really really good so I really encourage you to uh, not to keep uh, not to lose contact with home and also to keep on encouraging one another that um, it's possible lastly I want to encourage you to uh, travel as an international student if you can travel and just explore various uh, countries explore various uh, community explore and something i didn't know i didn't know actually that if you have a us visa you can travel to so many other countries uh, so long as you just have that visa i didn't have an idea about that so when i was coming planning to travel to the uh, to mexico i kept on stressing myself how do i get visa and all that so when i called the consulate and checked around i was told since you have a u.s visa that is not going to expire in the next 180 days you're allowed to come to mexico and you don't have to pay visa fee you don't have to pay, do any visa and i was like oh okay nice so there's some of the advantages so you, you, it saves you the stress of having to go and pay for visa and getting visa and all that so travel uh, engage learn other cultures appreciate other cultures interact with the community I love traveling and you all know that so when you engage with other community engage with other cultures it's just exciting so I shared a video about how to go to Islam Mujeres from Cancun you can check that that's just a by the way <laughs> my main channel is just uh, about supporting uh, people who are looking for study abroad opportunities how to impact in your small spaces and all that so guys please subscribe to my channel like share and I'm just grateful to have shared this opportunity with you guys thank you